Hello and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use macros inside of the song page to help you create a custom mastering workflow. Hi folks, it's Smudge here and welcome to Mastering in the Box. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use macros inside of the song page of Studio One 5 to help you create your own bespoke mastering workflow. But before we get into the content of today's video, if you do want to know more about digital mastering, then make sure you hit that subscribe button below and make sure you tick that bell and select all to receive notifications and all of our videos moving forward. And if you're interested in some of the services that I offer, there'll be links in the description down below, so be sure to check those out. Now let's get into the content of the video. So for those who have been following the channel for some time now will know that there are two DAWs that I love using, Studio One and Reaper. And the main difference between the two is that Reaper is really customizable in the respects you can customize the themes, the looks, the colors, the custom actions. You can even customize some of the plugins using some basic coding. But I'm really glad to say that Studio One is also really starting to get into the customizability by introducing macros. And today I want to show you how we can use macros to create a bespoke mastering workflow inside of the song page. So you may be asking the question, well, why master in the song page when we have the project page in the professional version? And the reason is quite simply because it's more customizable and it's more advanced for editing purposes. So if you've seen my mastering inside of the song page videos and where I introduce a bespoke mastering template, it really goes into the details of how we can use automation, events-based processing, and mixer scenes, just to name a few of the additional features that aren't available in the project page, but are available in the song page. But using the song page for mastering does have its downsides too. So for example, I've imported seven tracks into the song page, and as you can see, Studio One has placed all of the tracks underneath each other. And whilst this can be handy to use a function such as solo follows selection, where we can solo the first track, then when we move to each of the other tracks, it will only solo that individual track, meaning that we're not going to get bleed from all the different tracks playing at the same time. However, when you export this file, it will export the file as one single stereo file, and all seven tracks will be combined, and you will get an absolute mess. Likewise, if you was to go to the song file and if you was to update the mastering file or add to a project and create a new project, it will do the same. It will render all seven files into one single stereo file with all of the waves all mixed together, creating this utter mess. So how do we get around this? Well, we could do this manually by literally clicking and dragging the WAV files. And what you need to make sure is that the start of track two comes after the end of track one, so there's no overlap. And you can do this manually by dragging and dropping. The problem with doing this is where there's no precision, you do run the risk of either having overlapping files or you start to create too much of a bigger gap in between each of the songs, which is just going to be into your hard drive space or your solid state drive space, which is just unwanted. It's something you would then have to correct at some point down the line. And here is where we can use custom actions or macros to not only speed up our workflow, but to obtain precision. So we're ensuring this is done in a correct manner. So as previously mentioned, the macro is just a combination of actions or keyboard shortcuts, which are used in combination to create an end goal. So the end goal in this example is to move track two to the end of track one. So let's just look at some of the shortcuts that we can use to achieve this action. So to view the keyboard shortcuts, all we need to do is go up to the top of the page, click on Studio One and scroll down to Keyboard Shortcuts. And this is then going to give us all of the individual keyboard shortcuts that are available to help us create a custom macro. So let's break down the process that we need to create this custom action. So the first action we want to do is to loop selection. So in terms of track one, we want to loop track number one, because that is going to be our starting point for the rest of the individual tracks. And to loop that selection, all we do is we use Shift and P, and it will then loop track number one. What we then need to do is go to the end of loop. So we want to move the cursor to the end of the loop. And we do this by pressing number two on our keypad. 
Then we want to navigate down to the next track and we do this by using the down arrow. And then what we will then want to do is move that track to the cursor. And we do that by pressing Ctrl and L. And then we basically just repeat that sequence all the way through. So we then use that as an example. We can then use Shift and P to loop that selection. We then go to the end of the loop by pressing number two. We then navigate down by pressing the down button. We then use function Control and L to move to the end of track number two. And so on and so on and so on. But as you can see, that's four keyboard shortcuts that we've had to apply there to do one simple task. And this is where we combine those four keyboard shortcuts into a custom macro. To do this, we need to go into this little cog here and we go into Macro Organizer. And as you can see here, I've created the custom actions already. So if I go move my custom action for Move Tracking Timeline and click Edit, and as you can see, I've already applied the custom actions. So the custom actions that I've applied, first one is to loop selection. So if we go here and select loop selection, you highlight it and then click add. Then we want to add the function of go to loop end. Click and add and vice versa to add the navigation. So if we type in navigation, navigation down, and last one is move to cursor. Add, and we OK that. And that has then created that custom macro. OK, so now we've created our custom macro. How do we add it to a toolbar? And that's really easy to do. And all we need to do is go up to the top left-hand corner of the page here, and you'll see this drop-down box that says global. Now, the easiest way for me to keep on top of the custom actions that I've created, I have created my own MITB custom page. So if I right click on here and then click new page, it will then set up a new page. And as you can see, I have named it MITB custom. So if I select the MITB custom page and you will see that I have my two macros added as buttons. Well, how do you add a button? Well, you see the name at the top here, it says mastering. If I left click on here, I then got option for new button. And if I click new button and then right click on the new button, I can then assign a macro or a new macro and I can go down that route and add whatever macro I like to that toolbar. So let's have a quick look at this in action then. If I close this here, if I go to, let me just quickly undo those parts, and if I then go to track one, and as you can see, all I need to do is click the macro, move tracking timeline. And it's done those four keyboard shortcuts instantaneously for me, so I don't need to do either any manual dragging and dropping or applying four keyboard shortcuts at that moment in time. So now we have our songs sequenced inside the Studio One song page. But something we might want to also do is start to add markers to the beginning and end of the tracks. And what this will really allow us to do is create a much more simplified workflow so we can start to use markers to move inside of the session. But actually when it comes to exporting files, we can now use markers to really highlight individual tracks that we want to export rather than exporting all seven tracks at the same time. So for example, if the client wanted revisions done to track three and track four only, you don't want to be exporting all seven tracks or updating all seven tracks to the master file each time. So what we can then do is by inserting markers, we can start to export between markers rather than exporting between time selections or the entire project. So how do we do it? Well, it's once again, it's relatively easy inside of the Studio One, but we just need to go back and we need to understand what the actions are doing. So if we go to selection one, for example, so if I highlight track one, I then need to click Shift and P to loop selection. I then need to press number one on the number pad to go to the loop start. I then need to press insert to insert a marker. I then need to go to the end of the loop by pressing number two on the number pad. I then need to press insert again to add another marker. I then need to press the down arrow for navigation down. And once again, we just keep doing this over and over until all of the tracks have had markers inserted. So shift and P, number one, insert, number two, insert. And then we can press down for the navigation down. But once again, this is six keyboard shortcuts that we've had to use here for one very simple job. So let's have a look how we can create this macro too.
So once we're in, if we go into little cog on next to the MITB custom page here, go to the macro organizer, and for this time we want to master in market input. If we then click edit, and you can see that we have the individual keyboard shortcuts which are creating our macro. So the first one is loop selection. Click and add, and then go down the list. Go to loop start, insert marker, go to loop end, insert marker, and navigate down. And once we then created that custom macro, we just repeat the process by creating a new button and then assign this macro to that button. So if I now click track one, and if I click master and input, if I keep clicking it, it's now added all of the markers for us. So it's just gonna save that time or enable us to really speed up the workflow. So let's just recap. If I undo all of these process by clicking Control and Z, as you can see, it's gonna take away all of the markers and put the tracks right back to the beginning. All you have to do is click on track number one. It's already gonna highlight track number one. If I then click the move tracking timeline, it's then gonna sequence the tracks. If I go back and click on track number one again and press the master and input, it's then gonna add all of the markers for us. And that saved so much time and created a much easier workflow for adding individual processes into the tracks and for exporting the files either externally or into the project page. So that's it for this week's video and I hope you found this useful. And I say macros can be such a time saver. So if you've got particular actions that you perform that maybe involve four, five or six individual keystrokes, just think of how you can build a macro just to speed up that workflow because it can be such a time saver. I will upload these macros to the Sphere website. So if you do want to download the macros, then they will be uploaded on the Sphere site. And if you're not a Sphere member and you want to create these macros, then either take a screenshot of the settings functions inside of this video, or get in touch, drop me an email, smudge at masteringitb.com, and I could be able to provide you some support in helping you create these custom macros. So I hope you found this useful, and if you do want to know more about digital mastering, then make sure you hit that subscribe button below, and make sure you tick that bell, and select all to receive notifications on all of our videos moving forward. And if you do want to inquire as to some of the mastering services that I offer, some of the mixing and mastering critiquing services that I offer, or if you want to support the channel, there'll be links in the description down below where you can find out all of those goodies. So all that's left for me to say is I hope you'll keep safe and well, and I'll see you in the next video coming real soon.